everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cheryl Logan and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Ashland University and you've joined our program spotlight session featuring the religion department. So we're really excited to have you part of this. Um, also very excited to have Dr. Ahn give you a little bit more ideas to what you can do in the religion department here at AU. So when I turn it over to him, he's going to run over everything religion, and then we'll give you guys an opportunity to ask questions at the end. I have some questions as well, just so we can make sure everybody is on the same page about religion and what you can do here. But as we go forward, we do have Dr. David on here today. He is an associate professor of religion, and he's actually been on AU's campus for 24 years. So he is ingrained in this community. He knows essentially what accent on the individual means and he's excited to chat with you guys today share that information and answer any questions that you might have so i'm going to go ahead and turn it over to dr on thank you well very good it's uh it's good to be with you today one of the things about the ashland university program in religion is that we we try to help students find a path that is meaningful to them we offer an intellectually stimulating, broad-based approach to religion, but within that, we encourage students to discern their own calling, to decide where it is that they might want to use their study of religion, whether it's in ministry or in social service or in some other kind of field uh, related to their interests. And we, we do our best to, as we say, deepen and broaden your experience. Deepen in the tradition that you're part of. We respect uh, people's own faith traditions. We're not pr promoting any one particular denomination or group in Ashland. That's not our, our goal, but rather uh, helping you decide where you best fit within uh, the most. Most folks are from the uh, Christian tradition, not all, but most are. Uh, but whatever your tradition, to kind of deepen that, but then also broaden it, because everyone that has a faith interest and has studied religion knows that there, there are other views and other perspectives out there that, that you might not be familiar with, and we find that's an important thing for you to do. What you see here on our website helps you understand uh, another one of our little mottos is that, uh, of course, in, in the Christian tradition, we, we take the uh, commandment uh, seriously to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And so we say, Studying religion and religion helps you love God with your mind. You can study these variety of different aspects of religion. We, we have biblical studies as the foundational area, again, coming out of the Christian tradition, uh, but also theology and then the history of Christianity, moving on into practical theology, which would be things like Christian education and youth ministry and discipleship and mission, and then ethics and world religion. So we, we offer a, a, a broad base of a very well-known kind of foundational religion courses and help students really get a, get a sense of, of what it means to study religion in a, in a meaningful way. Um, I guess another thing to say, it's important, people often ask, what are our classes like? You know, when you, when you go to college at Ashland, what, what, what are you actually expected to do and what's it, what's it like? And the answer is, uh, we have uh, smaller classes than most universities. We try to be uh, individual in our attention to what, what your uh, concerns are within the classes. We do a lot of lecturing, of course, but also interaction, where students can write papers and uh, give projects and do things that are meaningful to them. So we try to be having your learning experience not be just reading books and writing papers, but uh, really doing uh, interactive kinds of learning experiences, getting involved. We hope that people will. We don't require an internship, but many of our students do internships and some kind of uh, practical aspect to their, their program. And, and then one nice distinctive of our, of our program, too, is that we have a thesis requirement at the end of your time studying religion as a religion major, at least, we require students to find an area that they're really interested in, and you can pursue that in more depth. So you either write a thesis or do a project of some kind that kind of serves as the capstone of your experience at Ashland. And we find that students do a excellent job with that opportunity. 
So that's a good sort of overview of our program. Um, what other uh, questions might you have at this time? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ahn. So you just mentioned the that some of the students do internships, however, they're not required. Can you give us an example of some of the internships that they've taken part in? Yes, most of our internships, as you might expect with churches, I guess I should take a step back and say about, I'd say half of our majors, if not more than half, are double majors in another field, uh, probably even a higher percentage, actually. So they would also be in, in psychology or in political science or in criminal justice or in other fields. Uh, but those that are uh, primarily just a religion major will, will tend to be wanting to do ministry for their career. They have to discern a, a calling to work in a church or in a church organization or some uh, field like that. So our internships, an uh, example would be one of, of a student just this semester who I've been uh, finishing up with. He's been doing an internship uh, at his local church as a youth pastor and learning how to do that effectively, uh, getting some training in that. Um, and that's, that's an internship uh, that, that's a very uh, sort of familiar one or, or a, I could say a, a frequent one, uh, youth pastors, worship leaders, and uh, kind of associate uh, uh, ministry activities that we do. But we also have students doing internships in social agencies so that they would be involved in helping with the, uh, the kinds of um, outreach in a, in a local community that would be important. And then that leads them toward maybe a career working with a uh, non-governmental organization or some other kind of social service agencies that would be important. Um, some of our internships actually are, are overlapping with other internships that they do. So you're doing an internship in religion, but it also has a, a social work component to it as well. So we do a lot of uh, hybriding uh, of, of our work with, uh, with internship opportunities, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Um, another question was, so you mentioned a lot of double majoring. Do students major in religion and have some type of minor? And if they do, what type of minor options are there? Yes. Uh, well, in our College of Arts and Sciences, if you major in, in religion, you would minor in another field. Uh, I think the most common one is psychology, actually, uh, which makes sense, right? A lot of our students that are interested in faith issues and, and, and religion not just as an academic study, but kind of putting that into practice, are, are wanting to know more about uh, human behavior and working with uh, individual issues. So uh, psychology, political science would be another uh, very common uh, minor, actually, that a lot of students have. We have a number of our majors are part of our Ashbrook program. Uh, but also we have uh, criminal justice over the years is, is picked up as a minor. Um, as well as communication studies. Uh, these, these are fields that are areas that, that help broaden a, a person so that they're not just getting a degree in religion, but broadening themselves out to be able to do uh, other things with that major as well. Okay, thank you. Um, and then students are curious to know about the opportunities to get involved in religion outside of the classroom. For instance, are there any academic clubs or organizations Yes, we have uh, two particular groups that we that we meet that have uh, for in our department, and then others that we encourage people to be part of. I guess the first thing to say about that, before I talk about the ones in our department, is that we have a very close relationship with our Office of Christian Ministry on campus. Um, in fact, even where we're located on campus is right nearby the chapel. We're in the basement of the library. So we have a lot of back and forth between folks that are involved in our in our Christian ministry programs, in our uh, the uh, what we call the well, which is a, a worship time and, and service uh, opportunities there, uh, the Newman uh, Catholic Christian Fellowship, uh, the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Most of our majors actually are involved in the Office of Christian Ministry, but then in terms of the groups that we are involved in uh, on our in our department itself, two major ones. One is the pre-seminary program. So we have students that are in starting to discern a call to ministry, wondering if they're, if they're uh, 
study would lead them to go to seminary or, or get further education and training in ministry. So we meet at least twice a year, or sorry, twice a semester uh, with that group. Often, we try to meet every month, but it's been, it's been about twice a, a semester these days. And we link them up with individual mentors who help guide them through the process of discerning their call. So that's the pre-seminary program. Then the second one is our honorary society called Theta Alpha Kappa. And we have both religion majors and religion minors in that honor society. That meets for special events uh, as we have speakers that come in and give different topics. And then at the, uh, the end of the year, we have a kind of a celebration ceremony for inducting new members to Theta Alpha Kappa. We call them the Thackers, the Theta Alpha Kappa group. Um, so our Thacker group, uh, we, we have a meeting with them uh, or, or a celebration with them every, every year to um, elect or, or induct new members and then have, have a chance for them to celebrate their scholarship. That often overlaps with the, uh, the religion theses that students are doing as well. So pre-seminary program and the honorary society are the two main ones that we have with religion program at the present time. Okay, thank you. And then just kind of following off to what you just said about our Office of Christian Ministries, are you able to give a little more insight about what Fellowship of Christian Athletes is or the well, or do you happen to know anything about the small Bible study groups that are offered? Yes. Um, and in fact, by the way, when you mentioned or asked about internships before, I should have mentioned that. Um, a number of our folks that do internships also connect with the, the Center for, for Christian Ministry and so they're involved in leading some of the Bible study groups and so forth. One of the great things, again, about Ashland is that we're, uh, we, we encourage faith and we strengthen faith, but we don't dictate what your faith is. So we encourage students to think about, okay, if I'm from the Catholic tradition, I'm going to get involved uh, in, I want to be involved in, in, with other Catholic students, but involved in the, in the Newman Fellowship uh, and, and be, be part of that. So we, we support that. I've actually been asked a couple of times to, uh, to give a presentation for that group and have some uh, interaction with them. Uh, I'm thinking through the week here because that meets on a Sunday night and Monday night. Um, on Tuesday, we have our Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And that's a little bit of a misnomer because not everybody in that group is an athlete, um, although many are. It's, it's a way to support the athletes in our sports teams and to encourage them to be good Christian leaders. But a number of the folks uh, that are part of that aren't necessarily in athletics themselves. They just find that's a place that they, they connect to strengthen their faith and grow. Uh, Joe Magalette is a, is a leader of that, a wonderful man. I've known him for many, many years. Um, then on Thursday night, we have this group called The Well, which is a more interdenominational or you could say non-sectarian kind of Christian group, uh, offers an opportunity for worship, for fellowship, for uh, some kind of uh, uh, topic or, or, or uh, you know, something that can help you kind of grow in, in your faith. And then there are breakout groups from that that are uh, uh, small group Bible studies that, that meet uh, throughout the campus that go that way. Um, and then, of course, on Sunday morning, we have the Five Stones Church that, that meets uh, also at the, in the chapel there. It's not directly related to the university, but many of our uh, many of our active uh, members are, many of our people are part of that, uh, that, that fellowship. So we have good relationship with the Office of Christian Ministry and supporting these different activities. I think wherever you are in, in your Christian faith, you can find a place to fit here at Ashland. And even if you're Jewish or Muslim, we find that the, we have students in those traditions that, that fit also quite well. Within our, within our university and within our mission. I teach a course on understanding Islam. We have a course on Jewish religious traditions. We, we include understanding about other religions as part of our core in our world religion segment. So we're, we're trying to be respectful of other faith traditions as well as the, the Christian tradition of which most of us are part. Okay, thank you. And Dr. On, the last question I have is, do students have the opportunity to study abroad? Yes, unfortunately, this year we had to cancel because of the, the pandemic, uh, one of our most important trips. Um, I hope the one that will go to Israel in the fall will be still on the books, I believe it is. Um, so studying abroad is a big part of our program, something I've been involved with for, for many, many years. Uh, 
the one I'm talking about that I was very much involved with and really hoping to be part of, may have a chance in the future, is our AU in Germany program, where we have courses that deal with uh, understanding not only German culture and German society, but more, more specifically, the uh, German Reformation and the, the churches that have developed out of Luther and the uh, Lutheran tradition that began in Germany back in the 1500s. So for many years, we every, every year, and we had to cancel this year, but it'll be going in uh, the, the following year and on after that, uh, we have the AU in Germany program where students can learn about religion, uh, particularly the German Reformation, actually in Wittenberg, Germany, where I should say Wittenberg, where, uh, where, where Luther uh, began his uh, uh, sort of uh, reformational ideas, uh, in, it made major changes in the church. Then we have the uh, Israel program that involves students going to Israel. Uh, we had it for a time in the summer, but now we've shifted. It's going to be in the uh, December, early January time around Christmas break, where students can travel to the Holy Land, uh, have an opportunity to, in I think it's about 10 days, no, about two weeks of, of travel and study um, all throughout the Holy Land, learning. We have a course that goes with that called Understanding Israel before they go, and then they have an opportunity to travel uh, and then reflect on their experience there. We also have trips that, that go, that are, that are associated with the different uh, biblical figures, uh, the Apostle Paul, a course that I developed called The Footsteps of Paul in Greece, where people learn about uh, the study of, of uh, the different books in the Bible, Corinthians and Philippians and so forth, and then go and visit Corinth and Philippi and the, the cities in Greece, Thessalonica. Um, and then one that is scheduling, we're scheduling it now for 2022, the legacy of Paul and Peter in Italy, which involves a trip to Rome um, and then also to Florence. So we're uh, uh, offering these opportunities to study in the places where the scriptures and the early Christian tradition began and learn more about it by actually going there. Students have benefited greatly from those experiences over the years. I'm trying to think of other study abroad. We, we connect with the study abroad office as well with other programs, mission trips that people take. Um, we have a number that go to the Dominican Republic, and other uh, other places in the closer to, closer to home, I could say, um, but uh, also opportunities for mission. And we have a course on it's, it's called short term mission, which allows students to study about the mission experience and then go and do a mission trip and then come back and reflect on it. Um, you see a theme here, right? Study, um, learning about it, experiencing it, and then coming back and reflecting and seeing how it transforms your life. And students have reported it really has made a huge difference in their lives as a result. That's great to hear. It definitely sounds like you guys have many opportunities to study abroad, as well as many opportunities to just get involved within religion, whether students are majoring, minoring, or just being part of campus ministries. So thank you so much for sharing. Those are all of the questions I have for you, Dr. Ahn. Do you have anything else that you would like to add before we end the session? I guess the one thing, a question that often comes up is, well, what can I do with a religion major? You know, especially if I'm not planning to go to be a pastor or a uh, Christian ed director or a worship leader or something like that. And that might surprise you to know that a lot of our majors, I'd say probably more than half, are not actually involved in active ministry. Of course, we have many that are pastors and that are leaders in churches and leaders in Christian organizations. Uh, but many are, are, are lawyers, are social workers. I'm looking at a list here that I developed before this session and seeing where some of our grads are. Uh, they're, they're teaching religion, they're teaching literature, uh, they're involved in um, actually in, in publishing. Some get involved in, in student work, uh, some get involved in public relations. So you might think, oh, oh I'm going to study religion just to be a pastor, and that's not the case. It's, it's quite a, a broad base. Uh, because we find that as you study religion, you learn about people and their, their interests and their commitments and, and what really makes them tick. And you're, you can be a better uh, uh, relater and, and, and you can use that uh, understanding and, and the information that you've gained and the experiences you've had and the skills that you, that you gather 
uh, in lots of different areas. So I just want to share that. That'd be my final point is that is religion is a good foundation for lots of other things. Just one more quick thing to tell you. My, uh, my stepson didn't go to Ashland, unfortunately. Had he known, he might have. But he was a religion minor, um, ended up uh, studying also history. And he's now teaching English in Guatemala, playing music and uh, doing a lot of interesting things that way. A uh, good example of someone who wasn't really planning on, you know, using religion in his career, but ends up being a very uh, meaningful life that he's having there. So just an example of what you can do with a religion major or even especially religion minor. Hope that helps. Yes, very much. Thank you so much for sharing. And I do want to point out um, what we've been sharing with you guys right now. This is the College of Arts and Sciences Department of Religion website or web page. Feel free to look through here. You can see a little bit of what we have to offer going through. But the big thing is up top, you can look at programs, you can look at curriculum guides, checking out faculty. So today you've got to meet with Dr. Ahn. You can see our faculty members within the religion department, resources. Essentially, this is going to be a great page for you guys. But thank you all so much for joining us. I appreciate your presence and we're excited to start working with you in the future. <laughs>